All right, let's go ahead and get started with Article 1. This is actually an international effort of seven different institutions being led by Dr. Svetlana Boriskina from MIT. The goal is to turn polyethylene, the polymer that's used to make plastic bags, into textile that you can make t-shirts, sneakers, and basically any kind of clothing out of. Now, a little bit of a background, as always. The reason that the fashion industry doesn't really use polyethylene at this point is because although it is good at letting heat escape from the material, it actually retains moisture. So the last thing you would really want is a t-shirt that just keeps all that sweat in there while you're working. Yeah, well, you mentioned it's the material that we make plastic bags out of. I know people that specifically wear plastic bags to like cut weight for a wrestling meet. I personally wouldn't want to wear like a plastic bag as a shirt every single day so i see where you're coming from it doesn't wick water it basically turns your clothes into a sauna exactly but they wanted to give it a try anyways because you know if there's a way that we can upcycle this material it could be very eco-friendly and surprisingly enough they went through the same process of making other synthetic materials which is you take its raw form this is like powdered polyethylene you melt it down, and then you extrude it into like little fibers. Funny enough, while they were extruding it, they noticed that the outer layer was getting oxidized, and through oxidation, it was making the outer surface weakly hydrophilic. So it was actually attracting moisture to it. Okay, so hydrophobic is it repels moisture, and that's why it wasn't mm-hmm. letting any moisture permeate through. Now that it's oxidized on the outside, it's slightly hydrophilic, which means I'm guessing it can wick water just like normal textiles that we wear right when they took those fibers and like um, weave them together to create yarns that you can make actual clothing with they realized that the space in between um, one fiber to the other you had channels where moisture could travel so they thought to themselves is there any way we can optimize this process they ran some computer models that told them the best diameters to use for the fibers themselves and what way to orient them to get the best moisture wicking possible out of it So they did some testing. They wanted to see just how good it was at wicking moisture. And in comparison to polyester, nylon, and cotton, it beat them in every single test. One of the tests was just they took a piece of fabric, they dipped it in water, and they saw how fast until it came all the way up. Okay. Another one, I think they placed a droplet of water and then the fabric over it, and they wanted to see how long it took for it to completely evaporate through the fabric. And in every single test, polyethylene fabric the rest well that seems pretty incredible because at least when i'm thinking cotton nylon and polyester those are the main materials in which most of the fabrics in our clothes are made of the only one i could feel like they left out is wool maybe but like as far as all the clothes i own they're probably cotton nylon or polyester and to think that this polyethylene material that most people wrote off before is now wicking water better than any of them that's pretty incredible yeah and if you go back like again one of the big drivers was being eco-friendly and this material even if you're not upcycling waste materials it's still much more eco-friendly than other synthetic materials so for example the process of just getting powdered like the raw material to make these textiles is a lot better than if you were doing it with cotton where you would need a large sum of land you would need water you would need you know fertilizers and to transport it so on and so forth And every single step of that process is causing emissions. But with polyethylene, you just need the raw material that is apparently not that damaging to the environment to get it all. Then you have the process of making it. So the melting point for polyethylene is a lot lower than polyester and nylon. So what that means is that you need less energy to bring it up to temperature to make the fibers, which is all very impressive. So you're saying this is like completely aside from the potential to upcycle the a lot of like the litter and ocean trash that is made of polyethylene just purely making it from the raw material is also has a lower ecological impact than any of the other fibers that we use today that's right that's awesome yeah and for the end user you know because it is naturally hydrophobic it doesn't grab onto dirt and stuff that easily and you know the researchers mentioned that if you're if, if you're usually washing a cotton shirt, you put it on a hot cycle for 50 minutes to get it to be perfectly clean. But with this material, you can basically put it on a 10-minute cold cycle, which also saves energy in the process. That's pretty cool. So, like, end-to-end, 
this is a better solution for making synthetic fibers. I think that's an awesome approach because basically what they've done is they've not only found a way to reuse these plastics that end up getting littered or, I mean, there's tons of them in the ocean. There's whole trash islands probably made of polyethylene in the ocean. They've also found a way to, you know, beyond when hopefully we get all that trash out of the ocean, they found another way to like continue recycling, upcycling this material to make a superior fabric as opposed to the other things that we're using today. That's exactly what I was going to say. I, I feel like what's interesting about this research, like you said, is that not only did they come up with a good product, a good way of making synthetic fibers, but also they incentivized companies and people in general to go out there and take the polyethylene trash and make it into something better. Yeah, they've basically commoditized this, what, what would otherwise just be litter. They've turned it into a commodity. So, you know, assuming this takes hold, people actually have an economic incentive to pull trash out of the ocean, which I think is a great way, um, you know, using economic incentives to try to make action happen is probably one of the best ways to do it. Sure fire. So for sure, for sure. 